Okay, before we um, begin the Urbana City Council meeting, let us all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Ms. Ammons? Here. Mr. Brown? Here. Mr. Jacobson? Here. Mr. Madigan? Here. Ms. Marlin? Here. Mr. Roberts? Here. Mr. Smythe? Here. Mayor Preston? Here. The first item is the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting, which is November 18th, 2013. So moved. Okay. I'll second. Um, motion by Ammons, seconded by Roberts. Any additions or corrections to the minutes? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries. Are there any additions to the agenda? Okay, then we have uh, petitions and communications. Um, Bishop King James Underwood and Reverend Dr. Evelyn B. Underwood. Um, do not wish to speak, but for the record, are continually concerned about the Dr. Ellis subdivision sewer problem. Is there anyone else who would like to address the Urbana City Council? Apparently not. Okay, um, unfinished business. I don't think we have any that we're gonna deal with tonight. Reports of standing committees, we don't have that. Reports of special committees. Um, Reports of officers. Brian Neitlinger, the interim fire chief. Yeah, I'd like to report on a couple of um, sin significant incidents that the fire department has responded to. Um, both of these incidents were on the weekend of uh, November 16th and 17th. Um, the first one uh, got a lot of press. It was a tornado in Gifford, and um, Urbana Fire responded shortly after that incident happened with our technical rescue team. Um, we responded with um, 18 people, and that was 10 Urbana firefighters, six Danville firefighters, and two Champaign firefighters. And um, in four hours, our, our team searched about 200 homes, and um, I think there was four injuries in that fire, but um, the t t team performed well, and um, I was real proud of them. And um, so I think they cleared that scene shortly after 6 p.m. And uh, I think as you heard at the last meeting, that um, throughout the week, um, our fire department gator and some um, light towers from public works were used so so we uh, we helped out on that incident but um, our our team did an exceptionally good job clearing the town making sure we didn't have any more injuries than we had so um, the second incident is something is one that happened on the 16th the day before it got um, a little bit of press but um, it was a fire that happened at 40 East Springfield and um, it was a champagne fire, but our uh, Urbana Engine 254 responded to that fire, as they do for most fires in that campus area. And um, I'm going to go down through a rundown of this call of, of why this call was very significant to our fire department and to the Champaign Fire Department. Um, on the 16th at 2.47 in the morning, um, the fire was dispatched. Urbana's Engine 254 um, responded with the Champaign Fire Units for what was a working fire. <coughs> Um, Urbanus 254 was assigned as the Rapid Intervention Team. And a Rapid Intervention Team is a safety team that we set up at a fire when we commit people to the inside of a building. And the purpose of that team is to pull people out or pull firefighters out if they get in trouble um, in, in a rapid fashion. So they have to be staged in a position where they can do that. Um, the initial strategy on that fire was offensive, so that means uh, it was an aggressive interior attack. Um, at 3.17 a.m., um, the strategy was changed to a defensive exterior attack because of a fire that, that started rolling over into the upper stories of this house. 
there were fire crews that were working in upper stories when that fire rolled over. Um, those crews escaped out of a second floor window and were not harmed. Um, as the strategy was changed, there was a Champaign Fire Lieutenant, um, Jeff Latz, that was actually caught in that rollover of the fire, and he was in a staircase that was exiting the second floor apartment. And um, he got caught in that staircase, he got tangled into some wires and jammed behind the door, and, and um, because our fire company was in the position they were assigned, uh, our firefighter, um, Roy Lane, pulled Lieutenant Latz out of that fire. And um, he subsequently was taken to Carl and then transferred to the Springfield Burn Unit, and he's now resting at home and recovering with his, fire, with his family. Um, just prior to the rescue, Engineer Fred Westoff um, applied a brief stream of water to the burning stairwell and knocked down the fire, so these guys worked together to facilitate this rescue. Um, their lieutenant was um, Keith Shafroff, and um, he had them in their assigned position where they were meant to be so they could facilitate this rescue. Um, so on uh, November 20th, we had the Champaign Fire um, chief officers come over to Urbana and personally congratulate Firefighter Lane and Engineer Westoff. Um, Lieutenant Shafroth couldn't be there. He was on vacation that day. Um, on the 21st of uh, November, we had an after-action review of the incident. And again, the Champaign Fire Department um, publicly thanked our firefighters for saving their lieutenant. Um, I'm kind of making this presentation to you guys because these firefighters don't want any public accolades for doing this because they've repeatedly said they were doing their job. But um, I think it's really important for you guys to know what they did. And um, I just want to recognize that crew for being in their assigned position, um, that they um, performed according to their training, and, and their um, performance was in accordance with the highest traditions of our fire department. So. Um, we're very proud of their actions, and that's why I'm making you aware of this. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Question from Dennis Roberts. No, no, no question. But I just, I'm sure we all really want to say that we appreciate the professional action that, that the team showed. And I know that when you're in a situation where it becomes life-threatening, it's really great to know that the Urbana Fire Department has uh, the practice and the equipment and the expertise to really help make a difference and save somebody's life or, or prevent a serious injury. So really good work. Thank you. Charlie. And I'll just add that I appreciate the cooperative efforts that police, fire, public works have done. Gifford, this fire at a restaurant I didn't even ever get a chance to eat at, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which I hear was pretty good. Um, uh, I, I guess, and, and um, to add to that, uh, do you have any additional, how is Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant uh, Lang? Is that? Lats. Lats. Yeah. Um, they is, were worried about his lungs. His lungs are doing well, and he's, he's recovering at home. He hasn't returned to work yet. Huh. But is, is expected to have pretty much full recovery then? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's important to point out that the Champaign Fire Department would do the same for us. So we're very fortunate yes. that we have two fire departments that work so well together, yeah, well, as do our police departments and public works, too. We do. Okay, thank, thank you very thanks. much. Are there any other reports of officers? Tom Carino, Economic Development. Good evening. Uh, everyone should have received last week the monthly economic development report. Just to highlight a few items, uh, there was a ribbon cutting on November 22nd for Bohemia, which is a vintage furniture, housewares, jewelry, and clothing shop at the former um, wooden hangar location. Uh, Dr. G's Brain Works, the Brain Fitness Store, and more had a grand opening at Lincoln Square. Uh, that ribbon cutting was on November 8th. And then the Urbana Butcher Shop at 119 West Main at the former La Gourmandise Das Cafe had a ribbon cutting on November 9th. Um, Addie's Bar and Grill at Stone Creek Golf Course uh, at the Clubhouse had a ribbon cutting and grand opening on Friday, November 15th. And uh, Dollar Tree at 1303 Colorado, the former hardware store, uh, is now open. Uh, just a couple other items. Um, a week from today, Monday, November 9th, 
the city has scheduled the annual joint uh, tax increment finance joint review board with all of our taxing <coughs> partners. Uh, related to that, this year, uh, December 31st, uh, TIF 3, Tax Increment Finance District number 3, is actually coming to an end, and we are preparing uh, for next week uh, for your review and ordinance, closing out that TIF district. But then related to both of those items, uh, we'll be coming back uh, to Council probably early in 2014 with kind of a report on TIF overall, its effectiveness in the city, and uh, some of the things that have been accomplished through the TIF districts. So you'll be seeing that sometime early in 2014. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions. Eric, do you have a question? It, it's, a, it's a comment that's in order. Sure, you want to turn your mic on? Okay. Uh, so we had company from out of town all weekend, and um, I had never gone shopping on Black Friday. And I had a granddaughter who had never gone shopping on Black Friday. But we decided to ease into it by going to Lincoln Square and downtown Urbana. And it was just absolutely delightful. It was totally different from any Black Friday image that one might want to, um, uh, you know, one might have in your mind. Uh, and I wonder if there's a promotion there because it was just a wonderful experience. Uh, I don't know what it might be, Black Friday for smart people with good taste, or <laughs> although maybe I shouldn't say that since I thought I enjoyed it. That does, I, I don't mean, whatever. But, but you know, it, 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 it really was great. It's like that all the time, Eric. No, it's like that all the time, but Black Friday is a promotional opportunity that uh, uh, that 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 maybe I'd maybe 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 it would maybe it would be good. Carol, I just wanted to follow up on the TIF three. Um, are we on target to finish the payout for the TIF three before December thirty first for the installation of the art exhibit? Yes, um, the um, there were actually a few emails today from the artist and the park district. Uh, coordinating the arrival of the piece in mid-December uh, and the installation and so the payout uh, will happen uh, before the end of December um, and uh, we're actually working with the finance department on um, putting together a picture of what will be left in the TIF district uh, what obligations will need to be reserved uh, and then what uh, will be surplus to the other taxing districts come the end of the TIF and we'll talk a little bit about that next week all right Diane, is is the TIF review board meeting open to council to the public, or how does what's the format of that? It is uh, the meeting is open to the public. Uh, the meeting I'm trying to re last year it was in this room. I believe this year it's actually in the executive conference room, um, but it is open to the public. At what time? Uh, I believe I'd have to double check, uh, but I believe the meeting is about three thirty. I, I can uh, follow up can and, and get you uh, the definite time, but I believe it's 3.30. Okay, anyone else? Uh, Bill Brown. Uh, I'll follow up to Eric's question about Black Friday. There is a small business Saturday that was yes. pretty successful, I think, downtown. I was in Lincoln Square and went to Dr. G's. And another nice thing is they have real personal service. You, uh, meet people as you come in the door. They explain, you know, a little bit about the store and everything. So that's kind of nice. Um, and then I think the UBA had a full full page ad in the News Gazette of um, small for Small Business Saturday with a lot of downtown Urbana merchants. Mike Madigan. Well, my first question would be to Bill Brown. Does your brain feel bigger now that you were at <laughs> Dr. G's? But. Uh, <laughs> Uh, my question would be, uh, again, about Wendy's. Um, I see in the report uh, that a permit has been issued. It's December. Um, <clears throat> my concern here is the matter of months that have gone by, and I'm still not quite sure why that would be. Uh, could you elaborate on why um, a national chain with a pretty standard footprint 
would take this many months to to be able to have a permit when the bottom line is I'm sorry to sound critical but I'm gonna they can't break ground now I mean they're done until warm weather so I just like to to have a public uh, discussion about a little bit of the detail there about what happened well um, I, I I can maybe talk uh, just generally speaking, you're correct. Uh, they did. Uh, they are a national chain, and they do have some prototypes. I think part of the problem was is the site is very small and very tight, and the prototype wasn't exactly working. And so there was. Um, we worked collaboratively with the architects and the engineers for the the franchise owner um, related to things like access and some of the. Um, some of the design components of the building that needed to be worked through. So there was a dialogue back and forth about um, modifying the prototype a little bit to get it to work on that site. So um, I think we had some good discussions back and forth, and the project is moving forward. And uh, we worked hard to make sure that we would that we could figure out how to get um, their plan to work on that tight site. Okay, and I just I just want you to understand that I haven't spoken. To the owner i don't know the owner i just what i know is i'm in this business uh, that building could have been built and opened at this point in time on an ideal site so that's that's the reason for my questions it's not it's not to be critical it's just you know this town can use more brick and mortar businesses and i just want to make sure that uh I'm sure you all are keeping that in mind and, and trying to be accommodating it uh, whenever possible. Um, but, you know, the, these guys um, who own this business are not, uh, this isn't their first business. So I'm, they have vast experience, frankly, uh, in the business. And so I'm just a bit concerned about how I, well, I would just, whether it's going to be public or private, I would just really like to understand what the difficulty was here because there's a huge parking lot behind that uh, site right now. So I'm just, I'm, I'm mystified as to why we don't have a Wendy's on that site right now. Not that I'm dying to have a Wendy's. I'm a barbecue guy. Uh, but you know it's more sales tax revenue it's more jobs for Urbana and so I'm just I'm really really curious as to why we are where we are actually where we're not where we are right now Libby I don't have all the details but um, we do have a very good plan review process that involves community development Public Works and Engineering and our fire department. We meet every Monday, every Monday afternoon, and we review site plans, and we get through our reviews in a matter of days. Um, so there's good people working quickly at all the departments. Uh, in the Wendy's, Wendy's case, they did have their sign up months before they ever submitted any plans. So I think if you saw the sign, you would think, well, come on, where are you? Um, but for whatever reason, they had coming soon before we even knew they were coming. It was kind of exciting, but uh, it took their architects uh, apparently some time to even submit plans for the permit. There were, as Tom mentioned, it is a tight site, and there were two um, design things that we talked about that I do recall. One is that they put, in their first site plan, they put the driveway where the subdivision ordinance, I'm sorry, where the subdivision plat showed access control, so it wasn't safe for the vehicles. Um, and that was their subdivision document, so they did redesign with the driveway in the proper place for access. The other item that came up was um, the occupancy. And the architect showed an occupancy of 98 uh, the limit for sprinkling is 100, used to be 300 square feet, um, I'm sorry, 300 occupancy, and um, there was a little dialogue back and forth, but ultimately um, we accepted the 98 figure and, and they won't need to sprinkler. 
So we never at any point that I'm aware of ever had any concerns from the developer that um, plan review was taking too long. It seemed to proceed um, other than those two design glitches. I'm, I'm not sure um, what the holdup was on their end, but I think we do have a good process and uh, we often get comments about how quickly we're able to do things and people are very pleased with our process relative to other communities. So I don't know if um, Bill or Brian, if you have anything to add since you were both involved in that site plan review. So that's just based on my recollection. I could probably dig in and get some dates for you too, but um, we, were, we were anxious to see them and would have liked to have seen them get started sooner. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, we can talk more about dates. I, I, and again, I haven't spoken to anyone involved other than reading uh, in the paper that they're coming and knowing the timeline for uh, building a facility this size. I frankly own one in Decatur that was a Wendy's. So, I mean, I understand, uh, you know, kind of the scope of what they have and what's required um, and what the footprint is. So... I'm not I'm really not trying to belabor this obviously it almost sounds like I am at this point but I just think uh, it's it's uh, extremely important that we're doing what we need to do on our end to make these things happen and it sounds like that's the case and uh, I'll be glad to you know talk to you um, uh, privately about what the timeline was I appreciate your uh, your comments though we are very development eager as you can tell from these monthly reports we like to see this development and we we roll over to move quickly so I and you know what you are really development eager you guys do a great job but here's the problem you have an insurmountable hurdle of a big tax base and really not an accommodating business atmosphere and that's what we all need to work on that's what we not and when I say we I mean the people sitting up here need to work on. Uh, we're not competitive. We haven't been for decades, and this is a, a, not an example of that. I'm just, from a planning perspective, I'm not saying there's a problem. I'm just interested in understanding why the sign's been up for months. When did they close on the property? When were the plans submitted? I mean, we can talk about all that, and I appreciate your comments about being business friendly from a permit perspective and an approval perspective. But from a tax perspective, this community is not competitive. It is not. Are there any other reports of officers? Thank you very much, Tom. Under new business, there are staff appointments. I'm recommending Rich Henschel for Comptroller, Matthew Dillon for Deputy Comptroller, and Sanford Hess for IT Director. And you've gotten the brief bios on each of these individuals. I think they're all very highly qualified. Do you want to introduce them? They're in the audience. Yes, they are in the audience. I don't know if you guys want to give speeches or not. Probably not, right? Rich Henschel, would you like to stand? He's been um, helping us since August. Uh, contract employee from an agency and he's had a lot of experience in Illinois um, worked with a 500 million dollar budget in Lake County and they got the um, GFOA award for excellence in budgeting so and then um, behind him is um, Matt Dillon who's been um, acting as chief deputy Comptroller, or Deputy Comptroller, I guess is the title, and he's done a great job. And the new person who, if you appoint him, would start on December 9th is Sanford Hess, and he's done a lot of work for state governments and locally um, started the um, art theater as a co-op. So he's a multifaceted, talented person. Anybody have any questions for these gentlemen? I'd like to make a motion that we accept these nominations. Second. Okay, motion by Dennis Roberts, seconded by Charlie Smythe. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? That motion carries, and it carried unanimously. So thank you very much.
welcome. So this is a pretty short meeting. Uh, there being no further business, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>